Okay, I bet you're here because you clicked on Create New Project in Godot. Probably you've got some kind of dream game idea that you've been cooking up for a little while, you're excited to make your game. You click on Create New Project, and then immediately you're hit with this choice of a rendering method. You have to pick which rendering method you want to use for your project. You gotta do it right away, and it's a very complicated choice. It's a little overwhelming. There's three different choices. There's a whole bunch of bullet points trying to explain what they mean, but the bullet points feel like a little contradictory, to be honest. And, you know, they got names like mobile, which makes you think you'd use it for mobile games, but then compatibility mode also says it works on mobile, so that's tricky. And you got this statement at the bottom. It says, you can change this later. So you're like, okay, I don't have to worry about this. Very reassuring. And then also, in the very same sentence, it says, if you change it later, you're gonna have to adjust your scenes. So that's very alarming. So I'm here to clear all that up for you as best I can. I wanna just help you as a Godot developer just understand what you need to understand. But unfortunately, that does take a little bit of kind of breaking this down a little bit. Okay, I think the first thing that we have to break down here, and it can be a whole can of worms unto itself, but the first thing we have to understand is the notion of a rendering API. So we wanna know what a rendering API is and how it impacts our choice here. A rendering API prescribes a set of conventions for how Godot will format its instructions to the graphics driver on the machine your game is running on. When someone runs your game, Godot's gonna to have to draw things on the screen. And the way it tells the graphics driver what to draw is the rendering API. The format of those messages, the way it encodes that information of what to draw on the screen, that's the rendering API. Godot will use potentially four different rendering APIs. There's OpenGL, Metal, Direct3D12, and Vulkan. Maybe you've heard of one of those or multiple of those names before. Of those four, I'd put OpenGL into its own category. OpenGL is older. It's been around for a really long time. It's cross-platform. It's open source. And it's just a different like style or different goal than these other rendering APIs. If you were making your game without an engine, you'd want to use OpenGL because it's a lot simpler. It has less features, but it's easier to use. It's less verbose in, your, in the formatting of its instructions. And it's, you know, in and of itself, it's cross-platform. One thing we can say right now is if you want your game to run on the web, or you're pretty sure you want it to run on the web, then you should probably just be choosing compatibility mode because that's the only one that uses OpenGL, and that's the only rendering API that's going to work on the web. I also want to clarify when it comes to this kind of trade-off of optimization that yes, Direct3D 12, Vulkan and Metal are you know, faster and newer, but they're not actually faster or better in all situations. For simpler scenes or for older hardware, OpenGL can be just as fast, if not faster. Another takeaway about this is because Ford Plus and Mobile use the newer rendering APIs, they also have a couple features that compatibility mode doesn't have. So there's a whole bunch of post-processing features, I'll pop them up on screen. One example would be volumetric fog. If you know for sure you must have volumetric fog in your game, you're dead set on it and you're not gonna try to like make your own implementation of it, then you gotta pick forward plus or mobile. Okay, the next thing I wanna try to do is clarify or draw a distinction between the difference between forward plus and mobile. So as the name would imply, mobile is for mobile platforms. That is true. It's not that simple though. Basically, forward plus and mobile will both use those newer rendering APIs, meaning that they're kinda intended for the more photorealistic or complicated high fidelity games but mobile just has a bunch of optimizations that make it better on mobile, right? The hardware between a mobile device and a desktop PC is pretty different. You know, mobile devices don't even have like a standalone graphics card. So the way Godot will like do the lighting calculations and that kind of thing, pretty different between mobile and forward plus. Next time I tell you about what would happen if you did change your rendering method after you started the project. And then after that, I'll get to my recommendations and try to give you some just solid concrete guidance on what to pick. Okay, so when it comes to changing your rendering method, First of all, if you did make use of one of those advanced post-processing features or whatever that I called out earlier, if you made use of that when you were in Forward Plus or Mobile and you wanted to switch to compatibility mode, then that's not gonna work out for you. You, don't, you can't have volumetric fog on compatibility mode. If you are using that in Forward Plus or Mobile, you're gonna have to make some tweaks and, and you know, accept that you're not gonna be able to have that. But otherwise, when it comes to differences, basically what'll happen as you switch between Forward Plus and compatibility mode, for example, you'll notice differences in the saturation values, in the lighting, in the shadow, that kind of thing some pretty subtle differences. The kind of thing that might be hard to get them to match up exactly, but if you wanted to, you could make tweaks to the lighting into the shadow and get a pretty comparable one-to-one -one difference. So what that means is if you change between forward plus and compatibility mode, if you have a really specific look that you wanted to have, you might find, oh, my colors look a little bit flat now that I changed. You can probably fix that. It's just, if you wanted to like make it exactly the same, that might be a little bit harder because the way the lighting and all these things are calculated is very different now. So you're gonna have to make some manual changes but those changes are gonna be basically limited to just kind of touching up some of the visual aspects of the lighting and shadows. If you've ever had to do this, I would love it if you would comment and let us know what that actually was like for you. I didn't find a lot of like case reports of this kind of thing. I have the one image I pulled up here uh, from a forum post, but for the most part, I haven't seen too many people go through this. My understanding is it won't really be a big deal. Definitely functionally, there won't be any like 
big differences, and it's not something you should worry about a ton, but you should expect there would be some small differences, some tweaks you have to make to your lighting. Another little wrench I want to throw in real quick, just a little caveat I think you should know. If you chose, for example, Forward Plus, and a person installs your game, and you know they bought it off Steam, yippee for you, they install the game, and they run it on their Windows PC, well, Godot will try to use Direct3D12. But if they don't have it installed, then Godot will try to use Vulkan. If they don't have that, then Godot will try to use OpenGL. And what that means is actually those same differences that we just talked about that would happen if you switch your rendering method. My understanding is they're gonna show up in that case as well. So you could have someone that installs your game and because they're using an older machine and don't have the drivers, it's gonna look a little bit different than you anticipated. That's something that you can turn off. If you wanna turn that off, if you do that, you're gonna lose out on like the sales from the people that don't have a graphics card compatible with Direct3D12 or don't have it installed or don't wanna install it or whatever. Uh, but you're gonna be able to guarantee your game has a consistent look. So that's not out of the question. If you if you scroll through you know, Steam listings, you'll see a lot of them say as a minimum requirement, you have to have Direct11 or something like that. So it's an option. So what rendering method should you pick? I know basically for me as a solo developer, after all the research I've done, I'm just always gonna pick compatibility mode. My reason for that is I'm pretty much always making 2D games. If I'm making a 3D game, it's like really simple visually. I don't need to squeeze out all the performance and, and all the amazing post-processing effects to make the game look like the next crisis. I just want the game to run on as many machines as possible. And so OpenGL will actually be the most performant on the machines I care about the most, right? Why would I want to optimize my game to run the best on high-end machines? I care for a simple game like the ones I make, I want it to run the best on the lowest end machines I can. I think for a lot of you, that's probably the best advice. Even if you're making a game that you only want to run on mobile, you're trying to make Flappy Bird, I would probably just choose compatibility mode. I don't really see the point in choosing mobile in most cases. If you're trying to make a photorealistic or true life game, you're trying to make something that looks like it came out of Unreal, then you're gonna to wanna to use Forward Plus if it's on desktop only. Or if you are making a really high end, super demanding game uh, that is gonna run on mobile, then that's when you would use mobile. But that's probably a very small portion of you. But if that's you, then do it. I hope you don't fret over this choice. You can even plan on just doing some benchmarks. You could decide later on to just test it across multiple different rendering modes maybe on different systems, that kind of thing, just see what works best for your game and just accept you'll make a couple different little tweaks here or there. But for the most part, that's not even gonna be necessary. Also, if the thing that's giving you pause, if you're still not sure, and the reason why you're not sure is because I pulled up that list of those post-processing effects and you're thinking to yourself, well, I don't know if I'm gonna need those. I, how do I pick? I have no idea what those things are. Don't worry about it. If you're not the kind of person that knows what those things are, you're not gonna need them, I'm like pretty darn sure. And if you do, you could just switch and then add them. So there you go, you have my recommendation. If you disagree, let me know why. I wanna hear more about this. I've done a lot of research, but I don't think there's a general consensus online about this topic. I really hope you don't let it keep you up at night. Just make your game, just enjoy it. But uh, you know, I am curious about hearing your comments and also especially if you have had to change before, I wanna hear more about what that was like for you. But I, I don't think it's gonna be a big deal in most cases. So I hope this helped. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, please comment below and please subscribe to the channel. I'm gonna have a lot more stuff like this coming out in the future and good luck on your game.